Geneva was the one who came up with also spake Zarathustra as the song that should go over the crying scene. This crying moment is based on real life where I had to sit in front of a classroom of my peers and make myself cry. Suck it. <laughs> it's 2001 of fucking Space Odyssey. Are you okay? What did York tell you? There's no better character than York who could tap into each of these characters' minds, figure out what their desires are, and bait them with it for nefarious purposes. If York weren't a warlock, he'd definitely be a wisdom caster. I think that he's uh, kind of the guy who understands his party the best because he studies character. Welcome to Limbo, where you are but a formless thought in the interim, waiting to be shaped by my tutelage. <laughs> The coach is off his rocker, takes himself way too seriously, and truly believes what he's doing is the highest art form. Find me someone who is better able to portray that than Allie Beardsley. You've seen them on Dimension 20. You know what they're capable of. I'm, uh, yo, if you have to fuck me up, fuck me up. No, I'm not going Do to. I look like I have a Miata? Okay. Yes. <laughs> there are literally dozens of completely unusable takes from this episode because Allie just kept make, making people laugh so hard that they would break. And also our camera people were laughing and the cameras were shaking and we couldn't use the take. <laughs> Improv is the beating heart of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, he kind of has a point. Improv is really great at jumpstarting your creativity, getting you to think outside of the box and forcing you to really collaborate and listen to the other members of your ensemble. Uh, to do what is best to tell the story, which are all things that York imparted to Viola in episode three. So of course it makes sense that he would bring the group to an improv class to work on those same skills. Trees have roots. I don't know how traditional theater training works, but luckily Geneva has a big old degree with her name on it. And every time she explains any of her experiences to me, they sound less and less real. So every exercise or game you see depicted in this episode is 100% real and I have done it. I vividly remember the class where I had to lie on the floor and flop around like bacon in a pan. And you at any given point, it. someone well, in the audience can aimlessly. come up and, and talk one of their interesting things that was I would definitely be ecstasy in this situation in the back of the class, 100% refusing to do whatever is happening here. Just one sl just one sl Yeah, I'm actually done. Every piece has been eaten. I see a whole pizza right there. When we were filming this episode, Allie turned to me at one point and was like, so have you ever taken an improv class? And I had to sit there on the set of an improv episode I helped write and be like, no, I haven't. And I felt really guilty, so I went out and signed up for an improv course. <laughs> Vito, I never thought I could find me a man that loves me as much as you. So we did script all of the improv scenes. And that was really hard. Kudos to our actors for figuring out how to like make it feel organic, uh, even though it absolutely was like planned because we had to have a shot list and we had to have a way to do this. When we initially wrote this episode, DM was the one who needed to be persuaded to participate. However, once we finished writing our first draft of the season and we got to know who these characters were better, we realized, oh, Ecstasy would be the one who would be afraid of being vulnerable and putting herself out there that way. Until I took an improv course, nothing could have prepared me for the way Ecstasy felt marching down those stairs to look incredibly silly in front of her friends, doing something very, very vulnerable and hard to do. Because now I know how awful it feels to do something that beginners are famous not very good at. You know, thanks for bringing us here today. I learned a lot. <laughs> Obviously, Viola's dug an even deeper hole for herself by the end of this. Like, she's ingrained herself in this group and cares about these people, but is still obviously taking notes on them. The stakes have only gotten higher for Viola now that she's bonded with these people even more. 